if Brooks is unable to take this. They're well clear of that treble. Nicely negotiated. Seventeen. Jose require 48. Not a great attempt from Bradley Brooks. Game shot of Jose de Souza breaks again. Six leg, Jose to throw first. Well, only. Oh, he might have some solutions, though. Yeah, that'll do it. 5 180s for Jose de Souza puts him two darts away from victory, unless Brooks could come up with a bit of magic. Can't, but he sets it up very nicely indeed. Jose de Souza for a 6 4 win. And Jose de Souza gets the 6 4 win. A game that proved to be awkward at times for the special one, but it has a very, very special ending. 6 4 victory. Bradley Brooks, for him, it was just too patchy. Actually, a very good analyst as well, working for Dutch TV. I don't catch a lot of Dutch TV because I don't live there, but I'm reliably informed that his 46. views are very strong but fair, which is entirely consistent with who he is. Become the Dutch Paul Nicholson. Oh, now, Dan. <laughs> wow. I'm trying to be the English Van der Voort. Probably the first leg for Jamie Hughes here to get one of those breaks of throw back, but he's going to have to be really sharp with Van der Voort in the same sort of range. For a break back, so... Actually, really, really big shot, this. That offers no help as a marker. They were so far apart. Missed wildly left, then wildly right. Van der Voort will be licking his chops here for two reasons. One, he thought the leg was done, and now he's won it. One of those classic holds that feels like a great leg, you imagine, for Van der Voort. He doesn't give a great deal away these days. He plays a more poker-faced style of the game. There have been some of the most comedic moments. It really is. That's what you do from 186, Vincent. He tried to leave double three from there a little bit earlier on. And on the approach, a couple of times in this match, more. Vincent has been a little bit wayward. Jamie required 36. Jamie Hughes is in the unenviable position of having to win five legs on the bounce. No score. He might Vincent not get another chance. 45. Vincent van der Voort, 45 points away from a second round meeting with Andrew Gilding. And he takes it. Regulation win for Vincent van der Voort. And for Jamie Hughes, his return to the Czech Republic has not gone to plan. Get a second leg. Still asking questions for the European champion. It's a nice light to try and get one in. Hammer one in between. No, comes downstairs, doesn't work out for him. One treble required to get a dart at the bullseye. It'll have to be the 17s. That's oh, a bit of a slip as well, so Yanni's got a chance to pounce here. Oh, it's a lovely dart. I'm not sure about the life of the single. Going Good plan. Times. Go where you can't bust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yourself a chance, and it's a chance that Yanni Lorila has taken to double his leg tally. Every time he wins a leg, he does the opposite cheerer. He just puts the left hand up. As this man, I'm impressed. But ultimately, Ross Smith has probably got two visits. He might only need one to get it done. Well, he is going to have to come back and sort it out. Six. Can't smash Johnny his way through to the treble 20, so it'll have to be 20 for tops.
when he returns, if he returns, and he will return. Another valiant effort. I mean, it's difficult to praise him without sounding condescending, but he has really made things tricky for Ross, despite Ross playing really well. And for that, he deserves praise. But that gets you nothing in sport, because Ross Smith was too good in the end. Seven 180s, an average of 99, and 60% on the doubles. That would have smashed aside many opponents. For single finger as well. We're guessing on how much money will be required to get to Dortmund, but I don't think he's far away from whatever the eventual total ends up being. Last year, it's around about 14, 15 grand. And there's extra money this year yeah, for first so and second round, well, everything. So you would think it's going to be higher than that. 17, 18. Maybe. It's so difficult to tell. But he's certainly right in the hunt at the minute. You would think if he qualifies for 100. two or three of the last Euro Tours, then that will do it. But he could do it this weekend just by having another run to, say, the quarterfinal. 123. There is to require 88. You'd rather have 72 than 88, but you'd rather get first poke at it. Bullseye for Labanowskis. Oh, it's right in the middle as well. Well, bullseye finishes, I think, more than most. Uh... One hundred. Darius Labanowskis is playing like a man who knows this is a big tournament. As we've mentioned his struggles this season. As it stands, he's nowhere near qualifying for Ali Pali. He's got to have runs in quite a few tournaments, I think, to get in those positions. Torkard is under threat, but he's certainly showing some resilience. And Steve Beaton pinned top for 117. Yes, he can. Steve That's a little prod in the back of Labanowskis. Yeah, best check out of the match, highest check out of the match. Whether you rate that higher than the 88 on the bullseye that Darius took out earlier. Maths should bend to your will, not the other way around. What, Darius? And when the first start's so good, Bill, you should follow it. I mean, I'm not sure. We'll never know whether he would have gone for the ball with beaten on a bogey number. 92. Darius should require 87. That rattled in the treble 19 bed of it. Well, the finishing has been brilliant in this game. It needs to be brilliant for Darius here. Double five. And it's not brilliant enough. And he is hoping that Beaton misses. It might just have to be hope. 16 for tops. And Steve Beaton plumb in the center of the top bed. And he gives the board a big old smooch after winning that game six legs to four. Once again, Steve Beaton showing his true class on the European tour stage. I've never seen that happen before. I'm sure uh, Dan Dawson will have seen it happen many times, but Steve Beaton advances through a few years now. And as I mentioned, that UK Open semi-final run has given him a really big boost. Rasma, however, is really looking to get his season moving. In a funny sort of way, standard-wise, this year he's playing a little bit better than this time last year. Just a shade over 90, but he's not winning as many of the small battles in-game as he was this time last year. We are going to be seeing him in Sindelfingen in a couple of weeks as well as this. So he's got plenty of time in May to do some great stuff. And there are two players' championships in the middle of that. Game and he starts this game pretty leg. well. Man, 15 data, Tump plus check out. Not reacting. Those darts seem to be thrown a little bit quicker than normal. Sometimes you want to get rid of them. 
Two eights for the lead. That was not close, that previous one. And that one's too many. Score. Adrenaline Man can do funny things to you. 35. I'm not sure Rosma can believe that he's coming back after Gavlas only threw two darts. I think a lot of people in here feel the same. I'm not far away from the double. This is where you've got to concentrate. 27. I had a funny sort of feeling that this is the kind of game we were going to get. The averages mean absolutely nothing. I think we're going to get we're going to get nerve shredders on the doubles, not just in one leg, but quite a few. Because this man desperately wants to win in this hole, and with desperation comes a little bit of nerves. But sometimes you get it right, somewhat unconventionally. See Adam Gavlas take a 4 2 lead. Yeah, we're sat about 10 feet away from the VIP section, and even they're going crazy. I'd expect better behavior, maybe. Nope, they're all rooting for their man. Not uh, one leg so far has been the same as the other. First sign of resistance 71. on the treble 19 bed there from Rasma, who loves a 171. Yeah, that is one of Madder's Rasmus idiosyncrasies. idiosyncrasies. He loves the treble 19. If he's struggling on the treble 20, you will see him start legs with the treble 19. He could have even gone for treble 19 on 152, but he's shown you the conventional way. Double 16. This is a big shot to stop Gavlas from getting a shot for 4-2. Monstrous finish from Rasma. And less reaction as well. Interesting stuff. Halfway point for both players. Just to stop Gavlas from having any chance of getting back into it. And now he can finish the job. If he doesn't go 19s first on this shot, then nothing makes sense. I'm walking away. I'm safe. Double 16, and Vadas Rasma has silenced the Prague faithful. Yes. Decker, his fellow Belgian, occupying the last qualifying spot provisionally at the moment. Oh, lovely. He find another. Well, goes to Bullseye, interesting choice. Can you imagine if you get three Belgians in the world match play? How the viewing figures would go in Belgium when you start getting more than Dimitri and Kim at majors. Belgian darts is on the uptake, that's for sure. And Kim can't revive his chances of that 86 out because of that really careless first dart. Enough care taken there by Rids. But cannot find top score tens. And this game is in danger of slipping away from him. Double 16 for 4-1 and another break. And Callum Rids has been unable to hold his throw for the entire match. Forcing his way back into the game. Or I think just I, establishing but himself. I think you make the good point, Dan, that Kim really has played well. Yeah, he has. And he's kind of doing to Callum Rids what Ricky Evans did to Kim Hybrix last week in Belgium, which has just shut him out entirely. Yeah, it almost feels like the perfect tonic to what happened seven days ago. Double 16 to win it. Game and Kim Hybrex has dominated that. A shocker of an opening leg. But then he found another gear, another three or four gears, and Callan Ridge could not live with it. Hybrex ends with an average of 96. But for 90% of that game, it was well over a ton. Look at Gerwin Price. He had to do that well. He dropped out, so he needed to qualify. I decided to sack the qualifiers off. Then when he won a couple to a Yeah. yeah. Sixty-five. Carry on by fifty-six. For a break. Oh. Twenty-four left. Games Why not do a double-double finish? Completely accidental.
but it puts him in front. Full play count. Yeah. It's the throw, but you would expect said Larchek to get a better one. 99. It is a better one, but it's not a great one. This is still on. It is still on double 12. Yeah, one for one check out. Nine. Jeffrey Sparadans, and look at that. Scream from the Dutchman. Game on. Wow, by me. See his tonsils and everything. Dislocated his jaw like a boa constrictor. That'll make him feel a bit better. This will make him feel a lot worse. One hundred seventy. Hang about. Oh, that'll make him feel on top of the world. The Sparadans Ultras have been silenced. 180 from Sparadans to leave himself on a double, and Carlos Larchek becomes the second player to pin a 170 finish today. Massive shot, massive moment. It's been a strange game. And it would not surprise you if there's a strange ending to it, because Carlos Larchek is piling towards a last leg decider. Sparadans only starts playing after nine dogs. Thirty. Well, once again, it's a leg where Carol Sedlacek has fluffed his lines. First time of asking on double sixteen. Doesn't really matter. Carol requires sixteen. Straight in. We do have an 11th leg, we do have a deciding leg. Well, Sparadans has already taken out 1 4 1. This would sting. There's only a point between them. Sedlacek will not take the 1 4 1. But he does leave himself on a double. Sparadans, can he pull out something magic again right at the death? Well, he missed double 10 narrowly for 140 in the first leg of the match. He's making a hash of this. Carol Sedlacek has three potential darts to get through to round two. Even Adam Gavlas looks nervous, and Carol Sedlacek has done it. Two fist bumps from Evil Charlie. And the Czech fans have got what they want. How big this shot is. Fifty-six. Smart on your goal. Sixty-one. Sixty-one for Clearmacher. Options. Twenty-five and double eighteen. Cross for double nine. Hey, right in the top corner. He's only got one celebration, you know, Martin. And most dark players have only got one celebration. That's his right there. It's, it's the three of them. I've played this year in a players' championship event in Barnsley. Where Bunting averaged a ton. 45. Techn well, technically 99.98. We'll that's, that's a ton. I'll, I'll we'll give round him, it up. I'll give him an honourable three-figure average for that. Martin Clearmacher could be on an 11 darter. Again. You think about how many darts he missed at double in the previous leg. He ended up taking it 16. 130. Martin if he doesn't mess around 81. this time, Bunting's got a huge issue. Double 13. That's amazing from Clearmacher. And now we're starting to see what he can do. This is animated. It's loud. It's accurate. It's watchable. And he's four ahead. At the minute. Yeah, well said. Bunting's average for the European Tour in his 60. career of 138 matches is 93.45. So when you take those into consideration, Martin's seven points above average. First match winning chance then. 
it might only take three more seconds. But ultimately, it will take at least one more visit if he gets one. Yeah, potential skin saver for Stephen Bunting. That's part one. Gets the single. The tops. Well, I've got to admit, I probably wasn't expecting that to go the way that this game's gone. Bunting needs a two treble visit. What a dart that is. What a 140 that is. He just will not go away. He is living like a wasp in Clear Maca's socks. He just continues to buzz. But he needs another haymaker just to stay in it. Does Clear Maca get the 60 for two darts at double 18? Does he get any match darts at all? Oh, treble 17. Well, he's tidied 64. that up very nicely Senior with the third dart, but 78. they were two really, really dreadful darts from Clear Market. Now, this is a bit more gettable than 137. Single 20. Must hit tops. And that miss could be the difference between surviving and being Not pushed out of the 32. tournament. For a second, first round win in a row. Martin Clear Market. Gets the job done. He defies a late comeback from Stephen Bunting. But...